Lord God, the Father, I ask you to bless this time together, Lord God, as we open up the Word and study about Jesus. And Lord God, we remove the paganism, Lord, remove the religion, remove the world, Lord, as we focus upon you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I lift up Ron to you, Lord, and poor health, Lord, and help him, Lord, and trace him. Lord God, all of us, through Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, John, chapter 1. Vast study that we have. In John chapter 1, we're in verse 13. We've been going through the births. The birth of man, the birth of Jesus, the virgin birth, the new birth. And in verse 13 is John 1, which was born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now the blood we, we venture into last week, the sinless blood of Jesus. Acts 20:28, 20, as we begin looking at the blood of Jesus Christ. And I am going to draw a conclusion that if you were to have a sample of Jesus' blood right now in the laboratory today, you would blow your mind to see because it's not the blood of humans. Remember, we're looking at the virgin birth of Jesus. Any child, whether it be a son or daughter, has the blood of their parent, of their mother and also of their father. Now, Jesus Christ lacked the Father as a human being. It's, it's the power of the Holy Ghost that came upon Mary that Jesus was in the womb. So when we look at Acts 20:28 20, to begin our study where we left off last week, take heed therefore unto yourselves, to all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost, that's what empowered the womb of Mary, has made you overseers, this is talking to the church leaders, to feed the church of God, that's me, those are, we, we, we've gone through enough study when we looked at the church, not the building, it's the people that are saved, that's us. Which, the church of which he, God, has purchased with his own blood. Alright? According to the Bible, of all the bloodshed from Genesis 4 of Cain's slain Abel, to Revelation, there's only one period of time that blood has been shed by God, and that's upon Calvary's cross. None of those blue blood of, of goats and bulls, Hebrew says, that's not God's blood. Of all the massacres of humankind, that's not God's blood. None man and no animals have ever been born like Jesus Christ was born, taken off from where we left off last previous week. Is Jesus Christ was, was virgin born with no male to be in part of that impregnancy, but of the Holy Ghost we see here. Now when we see the blood, we saw it last week as the sinless blood, no implications in it, no diseases in that blood. We see now it is God's blood that flowed through Jesus' veins and was shed upon Calvary's cross as we saw last week. For our sins, we saw last week. And when I got in the debate a couple weeks ago with, with uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, and we're battling out Jesus is God, God is not Jesus, blah, 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 blah. I, I asked that guy, it must have been five times, I said, did Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary's cross for our sins? Yes. Are you telling me Jesus Christ's blood was shed on the cross for our sins? Yes. The blood of Jesus, five times I made him say yes, and we ran over to Acts 20, 28. And you're going to deny me that Jesus is not God when that blood was flown by that cross, by the one who said, I am God, I and the Father are one that the sinlessness of Jesus Christ of that blood being God's blood, you're still trying to tell me that Jesus is not God, you're a fool. And I told him, 
We got into sinless. Do you believe Jesus was sinless? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how many other people can you name right now? From now to Adam, Genesis 3, that are without sin. Well, no one. Then it has to be God. Oh, does the Bible say we're God? Yeah, one day I'm going to be like God. I won't have blood. I won't have sin. There's something in our blood. There's even a teaching there out there which is pretty good, but we won't bring it. The fact is, Adam and Eve probably did not have blood in their circulatory system until they ate that fruit. There's something wrong with the blood. A woman has a problem with her blood every month and she needs iron. Or she has a problem she don't have that time. Your diseases flow through your blood. The fact is when the doctor says, I want blood work, because he wants to see what's working in your body and what is not working that can be told by the blood. And life is in the blood. God spoke to Moses. And the fact is, Christ had sinless blood and Christ had God's blood. So you want a Jeopardy question for $4,000, Alex, you can brace it upon and get it wrong. Did God have blood? Yes. Now, 1 John 1, 7. The writer of the Gospel of John, 1 John 1, 7. And when we say a priest absolves sin by the confessional, that priest has just as much sinning blood in him as the person who's confessing. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light, remember John 1? As he is in the light. John 1 says he is the light. We have fellowship one with another. That's Christian. Here we are fellowshipping around the Word and the doctrine of the Word and the teaching of the Word. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, capital S-O-N, cleanses from all sin. There we go again from last week. That blood cleanses us. That blood washes us. Now, there are religions out there that will go and sacrifice virgins, and they do, and they have. And they do their rituals, stuff like that, and they get bald and get blood all over them. They ain't going to do nothing for you. That's a sinner's blood that you have, that you have planted. And there's, there are people in the island nation that they'll go up and down stairs with glass and all that. They'll get themselves all bloody. They'll flog themselves back on their backs and make... You know, where the blood gushes out. That's not the blood of Jesus. That's not the blood of Jesus. So there's an artificial blood out there. Paul tells us, be careful, there's another Jesus out there. And when you imitate flogging yourself or making yourself bloody to make God happy, you're claiming yourself to be an antichrist, anti-Jesus. So when you go to Mass, whether you're a Catholic or you're a Protestant, both of them, they just have a different, different technique. Is one will say that that priest empowers that wine to be the literal blood of Jesus Christ, and one other religion says it's already the blood of Jesus Christ, without the hocus pocus. But both Protestant and Catholic, that wine is the blood of Jesus. And if I had drink it, I would have taken the sacrament. I have gotten grace by God to be saved. Absolutely nuts. You say, what do you do? When that priest does his hocus pocus, say, let me have a sample, let me put it under the microscope and compare it to Acts 20, 28, and let's see what happens. You'll find great residue. And even that is scientific junk that's in the meal today. The Catholics and the Protestants both believe that the mass is the literal blood and they're drinking it. When the Bible says before the law, the Bible says during the law, and they said in the book of Acts at the council, there is no drinking or eating of blood. You are right. violating yourself. All testaments. All practices. So some people think that the blood of Jesus, if I drink them, salvation is not to be taken for, it's to be taken by faith. 
And any nutcase would put that that priest that he had and put it under a microscope. I mean, listen, they literally, I've been in that religion. They believe it is the same blood that we're reading right now in that cup. It's ridiculous. And a lot of times now, they don't have to be the part they put it. They used to. I, I remember. You just took away from it. You get the wafer, that's it. Don't right, that. And don't vomit it out, please. <laughs> just don't scoop it up and have you uh, uh, eat it later. We're not talking about the body. Matthew 26, 28. Matthew 26, 28. And I said that only because that's what we're looking at right now, the blood. So, you got to realize when you're dealing with somebody and you don't know much about them or if you do know much about them and you walk up and say, hi, have you ever seen Christ as your Savior? And they say yes. And you think, oh, okay, he's a believer. No, he may receive Christ by drinking or eating. That's a Catholic way of receiving Again, now as Christians going out and evangelizing, we got to, all right, okay, how did you receive Christ? And you say, well, what's the best way? You know, okay, I, yeah, I received Christ. Or you're not sure. You say, well, how can I drill? How can I find it? I say, hey, well, we got a few minutes. Just tell me how you got saved. And if there's anything, well, yeah, I'll tell you. And I'll well, see, you know, every, every Sunday I go up to the priest. And now you know in your head, okay. Well, you know, I, I, I went down to the river and I was that <laughs> Okay, no, 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 no. My mama took me to church. And I was just, oh, I'm not, I see those in the veins. They're not receiving Christ. There was a time I knelt down. I, I, I was a sinner. I repented of God. I sought God's mercy and grace to save my soul. There you go. Matthew 26, 28. Words of Christ. Coming about what we just mentioned with the mass. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, 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 not all, not all people are going to heaven. Look at that. For the remission of sin. But I forgot to read a verse, didn't I? I forgot to read 27 in context. 27 is in context with 28. Ready? And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood. The cup. Not what they did. He not once mentioned the grape juice. He said the cup. What is the cup? In the garden considered, he prayed that, Oh Lord God, this cup would pass for not death, Cups like this in the Bible pictures judgment, the wrath of God, when a nation, Babylon's cup has got filled and overfilled as Nineveh did. God then will pass judgment. America has a cup. I don't know where it's at right now. We all have cups. We also have a cup of the Holy Spirit that gets empty and needs to be filled. According to the last night of Jesus Christ, that cup, what was that cup? That's the judgment of our sin. This is my blood of the New Testament. It doesn't say salvation. You know what a testament is? When you drop dead, they break out your will and testament. It is in effect after a man dies. Christ has not died yet. Here's an institution of an ordinance by the Bible and a sacrament of a religion that happened before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are not in the New Testament. And when they say... Matthew, and I don't know if your Bible has a religion, but just before Matthew 1, if it says New Testament, it's wrong. Christ had not died yet. The Testament begins in the last few chapters of each of the Gospels. But the first full New Testament book of the Bible is Acts. Yeah, you, you've got, what? Uh, up to Matthew, you've got Let's see, where's, where's the... Oh, let's see. In Matthew... Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 50. 
Matthew 27, 50. That begins the New Testament right there, Matthew 27, 50. And that's not even the burial and resurrection. That's the death. Matthew 1, 1 to Matthew 1, 49. That's the Gospel of Matthew. That's the Old Testament. That's the law. And the Gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died. There's the death. But, you know, we still got to go more into Matthew about the Gospel. But that's not where we're going. It's showing about the Testament. Now, Hebrews 9, 12. Hebrews 9, 12. And when a Christian believer in the faith of the finished work of Jesus Christ partakes of the Lord's Supper, not sacrament, it is said that I am showing forth the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus unto His coming. The Lord's Supper is not for, now, hey, I'm saved. It's, I am saved. But I'm looking back to what Jesus Christ, I'm remembering what Jesus Christ has done because I've made it for God. And I'm looking forward to the blessed hope. But in Hebrews 9.12, it says, Neither by the blood of goats, well, that would be not only the Old, the Old Testament, the law, but that would be uh, Wicca. Yeah. The, the goat is their symbol of Satanism. Yeah. And they do sacrifice. I can tell you one place in Connecticut they do it. And calves. By his own blood, he entered once in the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And go back to verse 11, it says, But Christ, sacrifice all the animals you want. That ain't going to do you no good. You need the blood of Christ. And how do you know for the Jewish people that it's Jesus Christ? They're not sacrificing animals today because there is no altar, there is no temple. The nation of Israel today, the individual, the Jew today, they can't do what the law prescribes. It's been finished by Jesus Christ. Revelation 1 5. Going all the way to the end of the book. The last book, Revelation 1 5. Revelation 1 5. Revelation 1 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, there we go, who is the faithful witness? Imagine a bunch of Jehovah Witnesses running around saying that Jesus is not God. I'm a Jesus witness. Come on, give me. And the first begotten of the dead. Yeah, there were resurrections in the Bible, but they died again. Jesus Christ resurrected. He never went back to be dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us. For God so loved the world. Not only did for God so loved the world. But for Jesus loved us. And washed us from our sins. In his own blood. And you'll get people come up to you and say. Well my baptism. My certificate. My, I'm in this church. I'm in that church. I'm. Wait a minute. What's going on? What about the blood? You know what salvation today? It's not a bloody religion. In many modern churches. You need blood to wash you. And we'll look at 1 Corinthians 11. We'll talk about the blood and the mass and all that. We'll look at verse 11, I mean chapter 11, 1 Corinthians. Oh, what do I want to start? 
verse 20. 1 Corinthians 11, 20. Let's look at the meaning of what the Lord suffered. And the warning. There are warnings. There are warnings to Catholics and Protestants from the Bible. It says, verse 20, When you come together, therefore, into one place, Wow, you can meet anywhere in a place for a church. Didn't say building, did it? I guess we need to sit in the cathedral. We could have the Lord's Supper right here if we wanted to. And sometimes maybe we will. And he does. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and the other is drunk. <laughs> you know what they were doing with the Lord's Supper? They were making it a fellowship dinner, and some people were not having enough of the Lord's Supper. I'll have no more Jesus. <laughs> Ridiculous. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I receive of the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, I received of the Lord, the Lord Jesus. So that be it. Jehovah Witness friend. There it is. Paul, same word. The same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. We read that in Matthew. Matthew 26, we read. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, not salvation, never salvation. What are you supposed to remember when you have the Lord's Supper? His body was broken. He was nailed. He was whipped. He had the thorns. He had his beard full. He was a bloody, pussy mess. That's what you remember. And he also had human flesh. And after the same manner, he took the cup which he had sucked, saying, This cup. Where do you see the grape juice? This cup is the New Testament in the blood, Matthew 26, 28. As often you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Alright, you take part in the Lord's Supper. You remember what the Lord has done to you, and you do it for the Lord is coming back. If you don't believe Jesus is coming back, don't do it. Ask any 20 mass partakers if they're looking for Jesus to come. There it is. And how often do you think about His death? That's what the Lord's Supper is about. The death, burial, resurrection, and He's coming. Which you mean you have to say He's alive. And He's not there for you to get a knife and fork to start chewing on Him. That's cannibalism. Now watch this. Wherefore, whosoever... For whosoever... If I believe in the Lord, shall be saved. Whosoever is not found written in the land of book of life, okay, that whosoever is written not only to save people, but lost. It didn't say to the brethren, For whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. If you have no reverence to Jesus Christ and His pure salvation, and you do it as a religion, you're going to stand before that Jesus Christ, and you're going to have to give account at the great white throne of the nation for partaking of this sacrament. Or if you were unsaved in a Baptist church and you did it, or you did it without thinking about the death, burial, resurrection, you did it and you don't care if Jesus Christ comes back or not, there it is. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth Eat, verse 29, and eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. How's that for damnation? For in Christians, it's a law. Ashes, wood, hay, or stubble. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or dead. You know what? What? One. One. Of the many causes of sickness in the body of Christ, it's people. It's because they're partaking that Lord's Supper and they're not doing it right. 
You know, one of the reasons why you could be a weak Christian is because when your church partakes of the Lord's Supper, they don't explain what the Lord's Supper is with this side note. When you don't partake of that Lord's Supper, whatever be the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, if you don't realize that there is a damnation attached to it, there is a possible sickness attached to it, and it could even cause you death, you're not going to so lightly take the Lord's Supper. You're going to make sure you do it right without tomfoolery, without, oh, this is my salvation. It ain't salvation. The only person to partake of the Lord's Supper is one who has been saved by the death, burial, and resurrection according to the Scriptures and has died to himself has repented received pardon by God, from God, of Jesus Christ and is looking forward to Jesus Christ to come at any moment. Other than that, you're violating the Lord's Supper. This is going to happen. So, back to Revelation 12, 11. They come to win. Revelation 12, 11. This blood of Jesus Christ is very, very serious issue. It's even proper hymns in our hymnal. I say proper because there are improper hymns in our hymnal. Are you washed in the blood of Jesus? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? The last time you heard that thing, uh, Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of their capital L, Lamb. We'll come to that in John chapter 1, verse 11. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There it is. How do you overcome? By the blood of the Lamb. It's not baptism. It's not sacrilege. It's not what you can do. I am saved by the blood. Not only by the blood of Jesus Christ, but the blood of God. I have to testify that Jesus is God. Because Jesus is not God. He just offered any blood and that's not good enough. Kind of scripture with scripture. Hebrews 13.20 Hebrews 13, 20. If you're not washed in the blood, you're not washed. You can say any prayer you want. We call it uh, the sinner's prayer. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ was resurrected by God. The great shepherd of the sheep. That's John chapter 10. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And the covenant is agreement that God made with man. A covenant that I am under today is the everlasting covenant, and that's by the blood of Jesus. Not by building an ark. Not by don't eat this fruit or not eat this fruit. It's an everlasting covenant as much as the Davidic covenant that God promised David and his seed will forever to be the rulership of his Israel. And this covenant is signed by blood. Okay, blood. No, no not just okay, blood. By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of God. And if Jesus is not God, then that blood could be tainted. Because if that blood isn't God's blood, then there was no virgin birth. Mary had relations with a man. If it's not God's blood, Acts 20, 28. But since it's the virgin birth of the Holy Ghost that came upon Mary, that blood that, that flowed through the veins of Jesus was and is God's blood that cleanses from all sin. Hebrews 9.14 How come this is not taught at the occasion by 
you know, did I have to have balloons and, you know, a little, well, the kids wouldn't be interested. But if the kids are not interested with this, they're not going to get saved. Oh yeah, at the end of the, this, the seven week period, you all said this prayer, kumbaya, and your guitar lessons, all that. That may not be salvation. I know, our family has been involved with one church, vacation Bible, from the planning to the end. It was nonsense. It was ridiculous. Is that the word? And the next one to be planned was even more ridiculous. Is that the word? I'm allowed to make more of that. Webster. Hebrews 9.14 How much more? That's a good question. How much more? What could be better? How much more shall the blood of Christ who, suffer, who through the eternal Spirit... Now we just looked at the everlasting covenant. Here's the eternal Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's got to be God because He's eternal. The Holy Spirit's never going to die. Offered Himself. Christ gave Himself without spot. That means no sin, no problems, no ailments, no freckles. No sin. To God, purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. There's that blood of Jesus Christ again. There are religions out there. Yeah, we got the blood. We got the literal blood. You've eh? taken it too literal. There are religions out there by water. There's a religion out there just because you're baptized. Oh, you, you can't be that Baptist. You've got to be us Baptist. Nothing. This religion, oh, there is no God. The Bible says, prepare to meet that God. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 4. Hebrews 10, 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. So, when you look, well, why were all those animal sacrifices in the Old Testament? That would be a picture of the sinless one. The Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Christ died at the same time and period that the Passover man was to be killed. As Israel came out of Egypt, Christ can bring us out of the world into salvation and deliver us to the promised land, New Jerusalem, for the quick. And chapter 10, verse 19. Chapter 10, verse 19. Notice how this is all about. If I've given you my opinion, which I've given some opinion, I've told you so. And if it's my opinion, you do not have to believe that. But when I'm reading the scriptures, you must. Unless I'm taken out of context, and I don't believe I am. 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, okay, saved people, Boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. I like that. In the Old Testament, only one man went to the most holy place. That was the high priest. Once a year, twice. One for his own sins and one for the sins of the people. With the blood of Jesus Christ, I may say I'm going to heaven. But according to the Bible, I'm already there. This body hasn't made it yet. I am already seated in high in, in heavenly places, Paul. Right? I'm there. This body hasn't made it yet. God's not finished with me on this earth yet. But there I am. I am in the most holy of all holies of holies to be holy that is in before the throne of God right now. How am I there? What did it say? By the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life which He has consecrated for us, us, through the veil, that's to say His flesh, He had a body of flesh, that's the wafer, that's the bread, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, oh, with the heart man, right in full assurance, 
These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. And that's not something you're going to get in a lake or a baptismal. Now see, don't apply that as baptism. But the Holy Spirit said, pure water. You can go on top of the highest mountain and find where that, that glacial ice is melting. The purest. That's not pure. Genesis 3, God cursed the earth, so there is no water pure on this earth. Until the millennium. Until then, Jesus says, I am the water of life. John chapter 4 it runs right in that earth. Colossians 1.14. Colossians 1.14 Here's a good memory verse to help you out through life's troubles. Colossians 1.14 It's all about the blood. Not my blood. You know, as a leader, I don't know if you would say pastor, but of this congregation here. If you were to kill me and say, God, here's the here's Holy's blood for our soul. God would say, that blood is just too sugary, too sweet. And who knows what else is in it? Uh, I mean, I know for sure I don't have any STDs or anything like that, but there's some of, you know, there could be a blood right now full of my body that's going to make a cancer, or already has. There's a blood in my body that might give me a stroke. I might have clots. It's not me. Colossians 1.14, who is it? In whom we have redemption. In whom we have redemption. Do you wonder who that would be in, according to what Paul writes? In whom we have redemption through his blood. Okay, what's the study of them about? Even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? That's Jesus Christ. That's the blood. My redemption. God buying me back. Redemption is. What we would, in Connecticut, where we, where we live was, you go to the store, you buy a can of soda. You pay five cents for the can. You drink the soda. You have the option of bringing that soda back to the store, and they would redeem that five cents you give them the can, they would give you five cents back. That's redeemed. We were created by God, but we walked away from God. We went to Satan, serving Him. He's our Father. And when we come back to God, say, God, I want you as my Father. I want you. He said, I'll buy you. He said, what are you going to buy me with, God? What's the whole study been about? The blood of Jesus Christ. So, when you get the fact is, when it says in the Gospel of what shall a man give for his soul, his eternal soul? Gold? That's tainted. If you were to have a gold bar right here, that yellow gold bar, I am told, it's yellow, that's impurity in it. The fact is, pure gold is clear, I'm told. And if pure gold is clear, the street of New Jerusalem is going to be clear. We're going to be able to walk and look down. Thank God I got a new body because I hate ice. That gold has a period. You're going to give that to God? You're going to give God silver? Your quarters? That quarter could have been in the bottom of the sewer. That quarter could have been in the hands of a, of a diseased person. You're going to give that to God? Your works. Really? And all your works were just so perfect and so loving to God. I don't think so. How about the blood of Jesus Christ who we read is the blood? Of God. It's God paying back us to purchase us by what God has done and nobody else. You think Satan cares for you that much? Absolutely not. Romans 6.23 Romans 6.23 Now, Romans 6.23 is a verse that we use when witnessing. You can. That is a spiritual application of Romans 
You, do, you don't do injustice by using Romans 6.23 and the law of sin. But doctrinally, doctrinally, it's written to the Christian. Romans 6 is to us that are saved. So written to the Christian, for the wages of sin is death. I'm going to die still because I'm a sinner unless the rapture happens. The only way I'm going to escape death if the rapture happens in my age. I don't know. It may I hope it does. If not, I know plenty of Christians said the rapture is going to happen in their time, and they died. But the gift of God, oh, how's that? God's got a gift. Is eternal life, oh, eternal life. You mean everlasting covenant? The, everla the, the, the eternal spirit that we've read already? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And what it has been. What has it been? Acts 20, 28 again. And we come all the way back to Acts 20, 28. And if you're going to refute that Jesus is not God, you're not saved, And I'm going to profess that by what we've studied so far, many verses, in Acts 20, 28, the end of the verse, of God, which He has purchased with, our, with His own blood. That blood that we ran, 1 John, Matthew, Hebrews, Revelation, Hebrews, Corinthians, Colossians, the gift of God, Romans 6, 23. That blood that we ran of Jesus Christ. Come back to Acts 20, 28, and that's God's blood. Because did not we read that Jesus purchased the Christians? Jesus suffered and died for the Christians? They became Christians by the testimony? Well, is that not the church of God? And I'll tell you where it, the harm is for the Jehovah Witnesses. They don't call themselves a church. They openly admit that they are not a church, they are a hall. I don't know what. Assembly. They're not washed of God because they don't believe. Mark chapter 14, 24. Kind of a shame. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. What is the gospel? It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As God. Mark 14, 24. And we saw this in Matthew. But we're going to do the context of verse 23. Context. And he took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it, the cup. He said that this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Now let me go back to Matthew. I don't have to put that book. I'm the context here of Matthew. In the garden. Matthew 26 and 36. Matthew 26, 36. Now remember, Matthew 26, 36. Remember what we just read in Matthew 26, 28 and Mark 14, 23 and 24. The cup. The cup. The big difference. Some people would think the grape juice would save them. They do say that. Matthew 26, 36. Then cometh Jesus with them to the place called Gethsemane. It says unto his disciples, Seek ye here, while I go pray yonder. He took with him Peter, two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful, very heavy. He said, and then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. They went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this come. There it is. There will be people in churches that will teach that it's death. It's not death. 
That cup is the sin. Not the blood. The sins, the wrath of God is the cup. So when you go to any kind of Lord's Supper or you go to any kind of Mass and you partake of that cup wrongfully, you are just drinking sin. That's what Christ did. Father, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. What was the will? That Christ suffered and died for our sins. In verse 42, the second prayer, same chapter, he went again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And the Bible records in the Gospel that he's done that three times. Never let anybody teach you that that teaching there of the prayer of Jesus God, it's about Jesus was afraid to die. Yeah. You mean he visits the grave of Lazarus and he does not believe that God had the power to raise him for that three days and three nights? I don't think so. That cup and cups of the Bible like that. It says, Mystery Babylon, she holds in her hand a, a, a golden cup of wrath, of judgment. It's rightly dividing. You don't want to be amazed. Those who do not rightly divide are going to be made ashamed. They're not rightly divided. And let's look at this more. Luke 22, 20. Let's look at this. So we look at all the scriptures. This is something that's repeated over and over, very, very. Luke 22, 20. Now, Luke 22, 20 has the concept in the verse. It's not in 19. In the wind. Luke 22, 20, likewise also the cup after the supper, saying, this cup, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. <laughs> the cup is in the blood? Read that at Saturday is in the blood. In the blood of what? In my blood. There it is. Which is shed for you. My blood is going to be shed for you. Oh, man. That cup was... You name every sin you can name. How about that? Take it more stretch than that. Now, there are people who say adultery, murder, lies. How about that? Let's take it one step further. You name... Every human being that's ever been in past, everyone, and that is, is that that was, that is, and will be every single human being, and every single one of their sins they've done, that was in that cup. Tracy sins, all her sins, even when she don't know she did, it was in that cup for Jesus Christ to drink, and she received the men's savior. You take Tom Soap, whoever he is, every single, let's say he's the most vile, wicked sinner that can be of all mankind. I don't know if possible. All kind, all sin. Every single one of the sins of Tom, Jesus Christ. He will reject it. All the sins are in that cup. And Jesus said, told God, he looked at that, he looked at that self, and he looked at that moment that God can turn his back on you and say, Eli, Eli, love us of It means, my God, my God, my God, God, this cup is going to make you turn your back off me. I don't care about that. That cup is going to break our fellowship. No, God, I don't want it. Second time. Yes, son. God, that cup is going to separate you from me. I don't want that. Not death. Death brought God, brought Jesus to God, and God to Jesus. Because three days, three days later, Christ shows up to heaven. Hey, Father, came in, deposit the blood. Uh, yeah, you gotta go back down there for another 40, 40 days. 
right, I'll be back. I know, we'll be waiting. Check the spot here for you, son. That was a terrible cup you had to drink here. Oh, Father, you won't even understand it. Well, Father, you know they say down there that when I prayed that prayer, it was my death. What the hell was it? That's life of death, you know. Because that teaching right there, the Lord's Supper, Luke 22, 44. That's your salvation That's that, that night. How about this one, Luke 22, 44? Twenty-two forty-four. We'll go verse forty-two. I want forty, but forty-two. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy be done. Verse forty-four. Actually, there's forty-three. The angels appeared. I know. Forty-four. And being in agony, here comes the suffering of Christ. Long before he's standing before the Sanhedrin. Being in agony, ag agony, he prayed more earnestly. My God. And his sweat. Adam, thou shalt sweat from the face, curse of the earth. He's going to put the thorns on his brow very soon. Was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And they say medically when that happens, you just in great, great agony as the verse says. You just heartbroken. Mm. Wipe the bug already the holy blood of God already started to come. Then Judas would show up. John nineteen forty four. John nineteen forty four. John 19.44 It's all four Gospels. This one. 19.44 There is no 44. Yeah. Okay, here, hold on. Alright, so we'll wait and see. Alright, John 19.44 Okay, let's see. Back to Luke one thirty five. Yeah. Luke one thirty five. Hold that one correct. If you don't put no faith in me, I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, Luke one thirty five. I'm one. And we're coming to the end of the study about the blood of Jesus Christ. We'll still be in John one thirteen for a while, but here we are. Luke one. 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, we already saw him mention, eternal spirit, everlasting spirit, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest God shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, holy thing, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That blood that was in Jesus, there it is. That's of the Holy Spirit of the highest. The blood of Jesus Christ is the blood of God, Acts 20, 28. So, there was no human man there to conceive Jesus. It's God, the Holy Spirit. Blood ran through Jesus because great drops of blood. And when they put the spirit in the dead body of Jesus, the water and blood flowed. Where did that blood come from? Where does the blood from a, from a child of fetus come from? Comes inside that room. Virgin birth. You got a problem. Has to be God. So that blood that came into Jesus right there, verse uh, Luke one thirty five. There it is. It is Acts twenty one 
Acts 20, 28, right there. The blood of God, right there, made that baby. He lived for 33 and a half years. He's God manifesting his blood. He's God, 100% God, 100% human, and inside his name flows the blood of God. No human blood at all. So, again, if Jesus Christ was sinless, and he is, I believe, I have to believe, but I do believe, how can you not say that He is not God when we ran the Scriptures today that the blood of Jesus, the blood of God, is the only thing to take away our sin? Because you can't have sin take away sin. I mean, if, if Tracy had her nice jacket here and she had a big glob of stain of mud here, I said, Tracy, well, I'll tell you what, I got this mud over here, let me wash you again. I only made it worse. So if you're going to if you're going to do works for God to get right, all right, what I'm going to do I'm going to do whatever it is you think it's all. Now you're going to go, oh, I wish I don't have to do it. Oh, this is, you just added a sin onto your work, which is a sin by thinking you can be worse saved. Uh, you, sin just adds more sin. That's what we're great at. But the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. The blood of God purchases. There it is. God manifested in the flesh. God manifested inside the blood. It's particularly that Adam and Eve had no blood when they were created. That's the whole, we may do that study one day, but that's the study. 